Hi, I just wanted to take a few minutes and share quickly about the goodness of God. It is definitely something that uh, God has been revealing to me a lot in this current season, and it's really come about as I've been aware of how many prayers and declarations I've been making just to see God's goodness be a reality, whether it is in relationships or situations, some kind of circumstance, um, just how much I long to see God's goodness come to pass. And I've also found myself just so stirred by these songs that declare again and again, God, you are good, you are good, you are good. And it really got me asking the question recently of, do I even know what is the goodness of God? What does it ask of me? What does it require of me in order that this goodness I so long to see manifest in these relationships and circumstances around me actually can come to pass? When we talk about the goodness of God, um, it is something that is present from the very beginning of Scripture, that Genesis 1, God creates, and that which he creates by his hand, his breath, his power, he declares as good. But the first time that uh, we see this term, the goodness of God, is in Exodus 33. And here the setting is in the desert, um, people of Israel and Moses. And the people of Israel have just um, tried to build this golden calf in order to worship a tangible God instead of having to worship this unseen Yahweh. And Moses has come down and had to deal with all that has come to pass with that. And all the chaos, all the disloyalty, um, and just confusion that's come to pass. And so here in Exodus 33, Moses steps away with God out of the camp, away from the crowd, to just a quiet, removed spot, just Moses and the Lord. And here is where we really learn about the goodness of God. And in verse... Uh, Let's see, 13, Moses really says to God, 12 and 13, says to God, I just, I'm ready, but I have got to know you in order to move out from here, out of Mount Horeb with the people into the land that you have promised. And Moses, and God's promise back to Moses in verse 14 is that my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. I think for most of us, if we had God's promise of his presence, we'd be pretty good. We'd feel pretty good about moving up and out of the place to head out into the place that God has promised. But Moses pushes it. Moses ultimately comes back to God in verse 18 with the words, now show me your glory. And I think about in this moment how God could have responded with just this brilliant display of lights uh, that would have left all of Israel and Moses just on their face in a moment, just face down to the ground. But God doesn't do that. Instead, actually, God responds with the words, I will cause my goodness to pass by in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. See, Moses has has asked to be shown the glory of God. And God's response is, I will cause my goodness to pass by in front of you. The glory of God is the passing of God's goodness in front of us. That the glory is the goodness. And God continues on, though, to reveal something about what this goodness is. He says it's so powerful, Moses, that if you were to see it, you would die. But in order that it can pass by in front of you and not kill you, he says in verse 21, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, which we've just learned is the goodness of God, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but you will not see my face. This is really where God began speaking to me about his goodness. Because here all of a sudden we see this connection between the passing of God's goodness and these seasons and moments of hiddenness in our lives. And this connection that oftentimes the, the passing of God's goodness requires 
are moments of hiddenness in order that that goodness will be present in the place God is taking us to ahead. See that, that our hidden seasons, you might feel so hidden right now, that, that our hidden seasons actually carry the promise that God's goodness is passing by in front of us so it will be present in the place that he's taking us to. But if we were to see it today for all that it is, it would likely kill us. But in order that it will be present in the place that we are heading to, God oftentimes pulls us in, draws us into seasons of hiddenness in order that his goodness can pass by in front of us. See, whether we can see, taste, or behold his goodness right now does not determine if it is moving and passing by us in order to be present in the place God is taking us to ahead. Because... Oftentimes, God's goodness requires seasons of hiddenness, seasons of obscurity, seasons where we are tucked away, pulled aside in order that this goodness God has um, desires to have present in the place he's taking us to can actually get there. It's an interesting thing to think about that that changes our perspective on hiddenness. See, oftentimes we're convinced that if we find ourselves in a place of hiddenness, it's because we're totally forgotten. But what if we're not? What if, in fact, God has hit, hidden us for this moment in order that all he has planned for us in the future has a, has a chance to pass by head to be present in the place he takes us? I just wonder what would change in us if we began to realize that our hidden moments, our hidden seasons of obscurity carry such promise for what God is doing ahead of us with his goodness. I just wonder if if we could see the connection, if we could see how much promise is in our current hiddenness, if we would just burst forth with thankfulness, if we would just be so grateful to God because of all that he is doing See, the lies that you're forgotten, the lies that God isn't present, the God, lies that God's done. The promise, the truth is that when you can't see him, he's still moving. When you can't feel him, he's still present. And when you feel so hidden, God's goodness may in fact be passing right by you in order to be present in the exact place he is preparing to take you ahead. In fact, this hidden season may be exactly what you need in order to be prepared for where he's taking you. And this hitting season bears the promise that God is at work in your life. The destination and our arrival on this big journey we're doing with God, our arrival on this journey with him, can never be more important than the manifestation of God's goodness in that place. We never want to move out or push ourselves out of hiddenness faster than God is ready to take us. But if we could just settle in, just be at rest in where he has us today, and if you feel in such obscurity, just be at rest in it and wait for the moment that God says, it's time to go, then you will arrive into the manifestation of his goodness ahead. That's the promise. The promise is that God is at work in our hiddenness and that God's goodness is moving ahead of us to be present where he's taking us. And sometimes what is demanded of us today is to be willing to be to step aside and to be quiet and hidden in the moment in order that all we long to see and all that God longs to do through our lives can actually have a chance to pass by and be present in where he takes us. So my prayer is that you would just be grateful. I would just be grateful that wherever we find ourselves, we'd be so thankful that we have a God whose glory is his goodness and we have a God who is actively moving on behalf of us in order that the place he will take us to is a place marked by that glory and that goodness.